uh, would see that the result of these changes is that we have shifted from a network um, architecture where we work in, in just one place and our application are in the local data center, uh, one where we can uh, check people at the door and when they connect to the network and um, then trust them with an uh, affected access. Uh, we've shifted from a concentric model to a mesh architecture where we have users uh, working in many locations uh, as we are providing applications in many places as well. So it makes no sense for, for us to actually use the same trust models in this uh, new architecture. We need to shift uh, to an explicit trust model where we verify user and device prior to granting access to a resource. Actually, the basis of uh, zero trust. Um, you know, I had someone describe the idea of zero trust as treating um, the inside like the outside. Um, I think that's a good way to even picture the result of deploying zero trust capabilities in that all connections, even the internal ones, are being evaluated as if um, they are coming from the outside or from a, from a remote user. So uh, what is the uh, zero trust concept? What's the mindset behind it? It's actually like um, a philosophy for only trusting a user or explicitly uh, confirming their identity and their status. It also focuses on users, devices, and the specific resources uh, being accessed um, utilizing segmentation and, and the zone of control. Um, talking about the strategy, uh, the zero trust architecture, you know, uh, the systematic approach to replace the explicit trust with explicit trust after, after verification. Like, you know, um, with zero trust, uh, you just not a one time uh, verification or um, challenges. It has, it has to be a continuous uh, evaluation of users' uh, devices, host uh, access to applications and all that. And it also requires uh, multiple technologies to actually address the user, the device, the network, the cloud resource uh, protection and, and, and all that. Then we have the initiative, what specific projects that ZTNA can uh, be and be implemented or utilized with all the use cases. The first one is the remote access uh, for users or users that are working from anywhere. It can also uh, be useful in network segmentation and also micro segmentation. Then uh, the zero trust uh, technologies, which actually speaks to the product, Fortinet products that can be used for this, um, to be able to carry out this um, concept. Uh, the first uh, product that will be in the suit of products is the Forti client, uh, which is uh, the agent that can be installed on um, user system. We'll discuss all this uh, in the coming coming slide. We have the Forti policy, we have the Forti authenticator, and Forti token as well, and we have the Forti NAC. These are uh, the concentrated uh, um, solution uh, that users can. Um, can buy in order to achieve zero trust in their network. Uh, the most common reason people are looking at ZTN is to support work from anywhere initiatives. You know, after the advent of the pan pandemic, um, organizations were actually looking for ways to provide safe access to um, employees who wanted to work in the office some days a week and also some days at home. Uh, they, so they rolled out uh, VPN access when they pushed everyone out of the office. And now they are actually looking for a better solution for the long term. So, and also some organizations are looking uh, to ZTN uh, technologies to help them reduce their risk uh, profile uh, using the additional checks and segmentation to reduce the attack surface um, in the environment or in the, uh, in the ecosystem. Um, other organizations are also you know, being concerned about their cloud journey as, as they shift um, applications to the cloud um, the, um, and how to also maintain control over who has access to those applications. So, you know, ZTNA can, can actually be helpful in all these um, scenarios on board. And um, um, so, um, yeah, some key features of um, 
uh, Fortinet Universal uh, ZNA um, architecture. Uh, you know, uh, ZNA uses per session authentication. So users are actually authenticated and authorized every time that they attempt to access an application uh, in customer's environment or an organization's environment. Uh, this helps to prevent unauthorized access and even if a user's credentials are compromised. Uh, we have um, the second, which is the secure tunnels. All traffic between the user and the application are encrypted, uh, providing a secure connection between the remote connection and the server or application the user is connecting to. Uh, we have the centralized policy management. Uh, policies are access to um, applications are managed. They are managed centrally, making it easy to enforce security po policies across the organization. And the aspect of scalability as well, the universal ZNA architecture is, a scalable, is actually scalable to meet the needs of organizations of all sizes. So, you know, in times of uh, user um, customers expanding and having more users or staff, you can easily onboard and scale um, to a convenient large numbers if need be. And the ease of deployment is, uh, is very, very um, important, you know. Uh, the universal ZTN architecture is easy to deploy and also easy to manage, making it a good choice for organizations that do not need or that do not have a lot of IT resources in the environment. So talking about the ZTN process, you know, uh, Fortinet ZTN process begins when a user attempts to access an application. Um, the user's um, device will first connect to the um, Fort client ZTNA agent, which is a lightweight software uh, client <coughs> that is installed on the um, user's device. Um, the Fort client ZTNA agent will then authenticate with the access proxy, uh, which is a server that is deployed at the peri perimeter of the network. Uh, the access proxy will check uh, the user's identity and authorization to be able to access um, the uh, the application. So this is done by uh, verifying the user's credential and checking the user's security posture at every given time. You know, uh, the user's um, security posture is a measure of um, the security of the user's uh, device. So it is determined by factors such as, you know, the operating system, the antivirus software, whether it is updated or whether it's out of date, and also the security settings of uh, of the device as well. So if the user is um, authorized to access the application, uh, the access policy will establish a secure connection to the application. And this is done by creating a tunnel between the user's um, device and the application. And um, the tunnel is actually encrypted, like I mentioned earlier, uh, which protects data that is being transmitted between the user and the application. 